Because what is this, if not pure, unbridled passion? At Home Goods, you can always get more of what you love for less. Because the best things in life don't cost a fortune. They're found. Home Goods, go finding. Smoking caused my lung cancer. They put this in me to drain the fluid. Every day I prayed that they would remove it. My tip is be careful what you wish for. That chest tube hurt a lot more coming out than it did going in. You can quit. For free help, call 1 800 Quit Now. Tomorrow on ET, we're catching up with Mandy Moore talking baby number two. I'm excited. Oh. And yes, that This Is Us Emmy snub. I think that's our biggest takeaway. Before we go, John Krasinski dropped by The Tonight Show and finally addressed his surprise cameo as Fantastic Four's Reed Richards and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. You're in it for a, a little bit and- How dare you? It was, uh, it was a big moment no, for me. Happening now. A San Antonio mother behind bars and charged with the death of her six-year-old child. Coming up, we'll have the horrific details in this case. Civil rights pioneer Gus Garcia's life, more so than how he died decades ago here at Market Square, is at the heart of a new documentary. And today, we're fortunate enough to have a few showers to look at on the radar screen. We'll talk about that and how hot it'll be for the rest of the week and through the weekend in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, a man is dead and San Antonio police are investigating. This is the result right here of a motorcycle crash on Highway 151 at Loop 1604. Right now, details of what led up to this crash are very limited, but video at the scene appears to show a red SUV also involved in this. So we're trying to sort out these details. We have a crew on the ground. We're working to find out more and we'll bring you more updates as they come in. Severe malnourishment, extreme illness is what killed a little girl and put her mother behind bars. Police arrested Stephanie Jimenez yesterday after a nine month investigation. But as Erica Hernandez explains, this wasn't the first time that Jimenez was arrested for child abuse. Neglect and malnutrition were the cause of death for six year old Samantha Jimenez. The little girl was days away from her seventh birthday when she was found unresponsive on October 3rd of last year. Weighing only 31 pounds, Samantha was dealing with COVID and pneumonia along with kidney failure. Her hair was also infested with lice. The girl's mother, 39-year-old Stephanie Jimenez, told police Samantha had fallen and hit her head. She later told investigators she would lock herself in her bedroom and let her six children do whatever they wanted. She said she didn't seek medical attention for Samantha because she had no help. And this isn't the first time Jimenez has been arrested. In fact, in 2015, she was given 10 years probation on two charges of serious bodily injury. In that case, another one of her children was also not being fed. We asked the San Antonio Police Department why it took so long for Jimenez's latest arrest. In a statement, a spokesperson said, quote, Child death cases are complex in nature and require the assistance of the medical examiner for a ruling as to the manner and cause of death. When presenting the case to district attorney's office, we are often only afforded one opportunity to obtain a conviction in a case. Therefore, investigations require detectives gather all available facts and evidence before presenting the case to the DA's office in order to obtain justice for the victims and their families. According to SAPD, the other children in the home are now in custody of Child Protective Services. CPS declined our interview request and is not sharing any other details on this case. No court date has been set for Jimenez until she is officially indicted. Her bond has been set at $200,000. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We move now to an update on the fallout from the Uvalde school massacre. You know that principal Mandy Gutierrez, who's currently suspended with pay, wrote a letter to the state investigative committee in an effort to keep her job. And in that letter, Gutierrez addresses the classroom door locks and Wi-Fi limitations. We've told you about that. And she denies that there was a culture of complacency, as was described in the Texas House Committee's report. According to Gutierrez, the doors locks were functioning even up to the morning of the shooting when the teacher of room 111 let himself and students inside. She admits because the building was so old, doors did need to be closed with force in order for them to lock properly. As for the Wi-Fi issues, the principal describes them as a reoccurring problem. She says the issue did not stop her from sending an alert to notify personnel. 
Now, she also denies the number of bailouts in the area created a so-called culture of complacency when those alerts were sent. She says the staff was trained to treat them as if they could escalate at any time. Now, State Representative Dustin Burroughs releasing a statement in response to the letter saying that he hasn't read it yet. And you could read the full letter that Gutierrez sent on KSAT.com. They are traveling to Uvalde. Pastors from all over the area and the country paid a visit today to pray at the memorial outside of Robb Elementary. After what has been a long week of demanding action and accountability, this service drew dozens to the site, all with one goal in mind, praying for healing. Among those taking part, Uvalde teachers, family members of victims, and pastors who've traveled from Harlingen to California to pay, to, to pay their respects and pray for their hometown. Now, Crime Stoppers wants your help. It's looking for the person who hit and killed a bicyclist. We want to show you the victim, 59-year-old Adan Villarreal. You're about to see his picture pop up. There it is. San Antonio police say that he was hit while riding his bike on Aldama and South General McMullen on the west side. That was back on December 21st. The driver didn't stop to help. Villarreal died at the scene. So if you know anything, call Crime Stoppers. The number's on your screen. It's 210-224-STOP. As the fallout over abortion rights continues, San Antonio City Council taking up a resolution to support reproductive rights next week. While that resolution won't make abortions legal in San Antonio, the hope is it'll prevent city funds from being used for actions intended to pursue a criminal investigation, like storing or cataloging reports on abortions, providing information to government agencies, or conducting surveillance on a person to find out if an abortion actually happened. Tonight at 6, hear directly from city council members advocating for the resolution and hear from them about why this is so important. Now to an update on monkeypox. The FDA has given the green light to distribute and administer hundreds of thousands of monkeypox vaccinations. These doses are being supplied by a plant in Denmark. That means there are now about 786,000 more doses available. Right now, more than 3,500 cases have been confirmed in the United States here in San Antonio Metro Health is reporting 11 cases so far. All right, so there's been a lot of talk about vaccines happening right now. Our KSET community partners are right here. They're holding a phone bank. We have three registered nurses answering any questions that you have about vaccines. The number to call right here is 210-351-1363. Now, in the meantime, while that gets started, we're going to speak with our friend Dr. Jason Bowling with University Health. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. So school is right around the corner. What are some of the vaccines that you recommend that, you know, parents make sure their kids get before school starts? Great, great question. We want everyone to talk with their pediatricians to make sure that their kids are on schedule, mm -hmm. that they have this, the appropriate vaccines for their age. And then we'll be moving into where the flu vaccine is gonna be important to have, um, because as we move into the, the flu, flu season, October starts, but we want people to get vaccinated beforehand. Also, we're talking about things like monkeypox and other things that people have to worry about, right, with that. Uh, what are some of the vaccines that people forget? We know that you just mentioned that it's a schedule thing, right? And sometimes parents forget when their kids are up, but what are some of the ones that parents forget? Yeah, there's some that come a little bit later. So we think about the things that people get early on, like the hepatitis vaccines, rotavirus, uh, the pneumonia vaccine. But later on, when you get to around the age 11 is where you start looking at things like meningococcal vaccine, which is something that causes infections in people in their teenage years or their early 20s. And so we start giving the vaccine for that when kids are around 11 years old. Okay, so now let's talk about the COVID vaccine. Pfizer is the one that's recommended for the youngest kids. Um, how far in advance do you think the parents should make sure their kids are vaccinated with the COVID vaccine before they start school because there are side effects sometimes. There are some side effects. So you want the kids to finish that series before school starts. Um, but if you really, I, I would recommend actually starting it sooner rather than later because school's right around the corner. So starting it now means that you can get that first and second dose in before school starts. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Jason Bowling with University Health, thank you so much for being with us here today. We're going to give you that number one more time. It's 210-351-1363. And we have a lot of this information also on doitsa.com. Steve, back to you. Thank you, Stephanie, and the good doctor. Let's check out traffic right now. We are going to I-37 at Jones Avenue, not far from downtown. And you can see traffic is very heavy, but it's moving. It's just the usual merge. Wednesday edition.
Adam Kasky. And check this out. So far today, 99, ah. the high temperature. It's just that psychological win there if you don't hit 100. If we still don't hit 100 over the next hour and a half or so, then it would be only the second day this month we haven't hit 100. Del Rio, Warren's back yet, 101. Floresville, 100. Leon Springs, 96. Bernie, 95 right now. Lavernia, about 101 this evening. More of the same. Warm and breezy. Gusts up to 25 miles per hour at times. Increasing humidity. Now, there are a few lingering showers on the radar. We're going to take a look at those and who actually got rain today in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. Well, as the days of drought continue in South Texas, local lakes and rivers are feeling the brunt including this spot is a spot known as the $5 spot. It's part of the Guadalupe River. Right now, it's more of a dry spot. No water in sight. This video was actually shared on Facebook by Stephen Overton, who says he actually visited here about two weeks ago. It wasn't this dry. There are parts of the Guadalupe, of course, that still have water, but this is a very visual indication of just how dry it is out there. And you can read more on KSAT.com. Oh, stunning just to look at. Mm -hmm. An outspoken lawyer and civil rights pioneer in the 1950s, Gustavo Gus Garcia, is now the focus of a new documentary premiering tonight right here in San Antonio. Yeah, and the place where they're having it, it's a place where he died at the age of 48. But as Jesse de Goyado explains, the producers say that remembering Gus Garcia is more about his legacy than about where and how he died. When people remember Gus Garcia, they usually recall the moving presentation he made before the U.S. Supreme Court in 1954. Co-producers Placido Salazar and Efrain Gutierrez say it was more like an eloquent lecture by Gus Garcia about Mexican-Americans in response to the attitude of some on the high court back then. Some guys even on the bench were saying, well, don't they call them greasers down there? Garcia and a powerful legal team were appealing the conviction of a Mexican-American by an all-white jury. He was not given all of his rights as a citizen, uh, and Gus picked it up and he took it to the Supreme Court. And won the landmark case under the 14th Amendment, guaranteeing equal protection under the law for Mexican-Americans, eventually leading to school desegregation and other victories for their civil rights. Yet too often, they say, Gus Garcia's astounding legal genius for civil rights has been overshadowed by his untimely death at 48. Contrary to popular belief, the documentary tells a much different story about how it was that Gus Garcia came to die here at what was then the farmer's market. Salazar says Garcia may have been an alcoholic who'd lost everything, but he didn't die on a bus bench. In an interview before his death, attorney Richard Acevedo says his uncle, a vendor in the old farmer's market, had told him to check on Garcia, who'd fallen off the cot his uncle kept for him. He was obviously losing consciousness and... Uh... That's when he passed away. Yet they say it's Gus Garcia's pioneering legacy that bears remembering, even more so now. Jesse de Goyado, KSET, 12 News. And remembering Gus Garcia is screening for free tonight. It's at the Edgewood Theater of Performing Arts. Doors open at 6.30, and then after the film, the audience is also going to hear from some of those people who knew the civil rights pioneer. We'll be right back after this. Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom. Here's a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Uncompassionate and dangerous. It's how a witness describes the actions of a VIA driver who dropped off two elderly women at a business that was closed for the day. Those women are wheelchair bound and were supposed to celebrate a birthday. So did the driver act appropriately? Tonight, Alicia Barrera shares how the experience has now prompted an investigation and an apology. Meanwhile, KSAT investigates revealing how women employed by the city were harassed by their male supervisors with hair pulling, groping and sexual comments. Now, investigative reporter Dylan Collier is back with more and how finally one of those men has been charged with a crime. But at least one worker is still skeptical. Just don't say anything. Don't even go. Don't even promise because promise it doesn't work at all. That's coming up tonight at 6.30 on KSAT Investigates. All that coming your way in less than an hour on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. I'll see you then. Well, are you stuck in a rut with your go-to kitchen appliances, turning out the same meals week after week? 
Not to worry, 12 Inner Sides Marilyn Moritz is here to help with the accessories you need to take grilling, multi cooking, even air frying to the next level, all for less than $30. You probably have your go-to appliances for cooking, so how about some doodads to go with? Consumer Reports' Tanya Christian checked out accessories for her air fryer. And a couple were duds, like this too shallow waffle mold, and this paper liner that can come loose and fly up into the heating element. But I had a few favorites. Like this steel skewer rack for kebabs. The rack suspends meat so it gets crispy all around. Hate cleaning the drippings out of the bin? This silicone cooking pot allows air to circulate all around the food and then pops into the dishwasher. For multi-cookers, testers say the silicone steam rack is a game changer. Lock a steamer basket onto it and you can safely lift food in and out. If you love cheesecake as much as I do, this seven and a half inch springform pan is a must. It makes cheesecake so much better and easier in the multi-cooker than in the oven. Next, the grill. When I cook for a crowd, I usually smoke large cuts of meat. Silicone barbecue gloves make it easy for me to move the meat around the surface of the grill or even take it right off the heat and put it on a serving tray. This Traeger rib rack is also a favorite. It holds eight racks on their side, so that saves space for more food. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 sure. News. Cause like. Ah, you know that grill got Adam yes. Kasky's attention. There's no <laughs> doubt he's over there commenting about it and you know well, the accessories he has. And, and, you know. and I'm just saying, we don't refer, we. <laughs> I'm grouping in other smokers out there. I, I typically not, don't call them barbecue gloves. They're meat mitts. Meat mitts, I like it. The alliteration. Meat mitts, yes. Maybe they should call them like meatins. <laughs> Meetings if they're <laughs> it's so stupid I shouldn't be laughing. All right, but it was so stupid it was funny. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, exactly. Rain chances. Let's take a look at the uh, rain chances going forward. Tomorrow another 10% chance. Then we get into Friday. I actually boosted us up to 20% chance. So there you have it. And then Monday and Tuesday, you know, 10%. So we're not looking at a whole lot out there in terms of rainfall. Now I want to show you this time lapse. Look just beyond downtown or above it, I should say. And you see one of the thunderstorms building this afternoon southeast of San Antonio. That was in southern Wilson County, just outside of Poth. And actually, we'll take a look at the radar and show you that exact storm. That was this one that you're going to see here develop near Falls City, move just southwest of Poth, and then dissipate. So these are short-lived, but at least a few lucky communities and Ranches out there saw a little bit of brief heavy rain, but that's the one we could see from our city cam at I-10 and 410. That one reached up to 35,000 feet, so that's why it was so easy to see from our live cam and city cam. You look at the activity over the past couple of hours, very, very isolated in nature. This is that 10% that we talk about. Most of us dry, but that 10% of you out there that are fortunate are especially right along I-10. Schulenburg two days in a row now. How about that? And this has picked up quite a bit in intensity with all that lightning in and around Schulenburg. All those white lines indicate the lightning bolts and even some heavy downpours there right along I-10. And then you just head west into northern Gonzales County along I-10, Newtonville to Welder, and has some rain for those folks. But that's about it. Otherwise, it's along the Gulf Coastline and in parts of West Texas. And it is monsoon season, West Texas, and even, even into the Four Corners region. So they're seeing their activity and catching up on some rainfall. Now, this is our rain future cast over the next seven days. And this is basically for the broad scale precipitation. And it's almost like a practical joke. It's like a big donut around us, Texas. And we're right in the middle, in the middle of that donut hole with just about nothing around us. All right, right now we're at 99 degrees. Dew point is 61, feels like 100. 98 Uvalde, Kerrville 96 degrees. New Braunfels at triple digits along with Converse and 100 in Castroville. Tomorrow we'll start the day at 78 degrees. By noon up to 91, right near 100. But it wouldn't surprise me if we stayed just shy of it tomorrow afternoon. And I do think there will be many locations just shy of triple digits the next couple of days. So yes, yeah, still above average, but not record challenging. And we're not seeing the intense heat that we've had in days and weeks past. Overall, right near 100 with not much of a change. Oh. And Still up in the air whether we'll actually hit 100 though today. Yeah, we'll know by six o'clock. All right, thanks Adam. Well, you know what, let's go to a place where it's a lot cooler.
a lot. A lot cooler. Our friend Greg Simmons <laughs> is joining us from California right now where he's there for the Cowboys camp. All right, so they held their first practice today. Yeah, and you know, the big question after the first practice, is Zeke 100% coming into the season? When we come back, we'll hear from Zeke for the very first time. The Spurs release their preseason schedule coming up. Camping with KZ, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp here in Oxnard, California. We have the first practice in the books. The players and staff reported on Monday, but this was the actual first day that they suited up for their first workout on camp. At a symbolic moment, Tyron Smith and Zach Martin have 15 Pro Bowl distinctions between them, leading out star quarterback Dak Prescott for the first workout of training camp. Ezekiel Elliott ready to go after playing injured the last three months of last season. And Micah Parsons after 13 sacks last year. What can the rookie defensive player of the year pull off this year? His first moves signing autographs for the fans. Once they got into the field today, it was time to get at it, set the tone for the 2022 season to come. Just helmets and shorts to start, but that didn't stop Anthony Brown from coming up with a big defensive play during the two-minute drill. Jumps the route on this Dak Prescott pass for the interception. Nice play. One of the question marks coming into camp was the health of star running back Ezekiel Elliott. The playing hurt the last three months of the season, but today he pronounced himself good to go, but not before some concerns. You know, I was a little a little worried uh, at the beginning of the offseason. I'm like, dang, you know, this thing still kind of feels a little, a little iffy. But uh, I'll say probably, you know, a month or two into the offseason, a month or two getting back into work. And, uh, and uh, I'll say, you know, probably by the time OTAs hit, um, I, I was back 100. A uh, funny exchange occurred during the State of the Cowboys address when it came to the future of Mike McCarthy as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones admittedly sensitive over off-season reports who will have a quick hook on McCarthy. The Cowboys stumbled out of the gate this season, what with defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, former Cowboys assistant Sean Payton waiting in the wings. In order to hush those rumors, has it resulted in a contract extension? It has not. Any other questions? I appreciate questions? you pushing. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions? Hey, we tried to help, right? Here's a look at the Cow the Spurs preseason schedule released today. They'll start off at Houston on October the 2nd. Back-to-back -back games October the 6th and 9th against Orlando, New Orleans, Utah on the 11th, and at home against Oklahoma City. And speaking of the Thunder, they have hired shooting coach Chip England from the Spurs, so he's now an OKC assistant. More coming up at 6, live from the Cowboys training camp in SoCal. Greg Simmons, case at 12 Sports. Not happy with that cheap Chip England uh, news, Greg. That is not be. good for the Spurs. Yeah, thank you. You're right. We'll be right back after this. I want to give you an update on that fatal motorcycle crash on Highway 151 and 1604. We told you about the top of the show. We know the man who died was in his 70s. His name hasn't been released yet. So the San Antonio Police Department is investigating. They say that he was driving eastbound on Highway 151 when he was hit by a driver. And the 24-year-old man who hit the victim stayed at the scene. He's not facing any charges at this time. So there's an update for you, and we'll have more when we see you at 6 o'clock. But now let's check on weather. All right, everywhere you see that kind of blue and green on the screen, that's where we actually had some rain today. Highly isolated, and it's going to be the same the next couple of afternoons, especially east of San Antonio. High temperatures right near 100 for at least the next week. Thank you, and thanks for watching. See you back here at 6. World News is next.